Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at this 2007 Ford Mustang. This Ford Mustang has had a new engine put in it and ever since the engine has been installed we have a drivability problem where the engine is cutting out. It has several codes apparently. One of them is for the control module malfunctioning and another one is for the PIP signal malfunctioning. So the first thing I really want to do is I want to get a scan tool on here where we can just see whatever codes are in it right now and then we're going to need to get a scope on this thing so we can see where our problem really lies. So let's go ahead and get the scan tool on the vehicle. Okay, we've got the scan tool connected to this Ford Mustang. Let's take a look at the data. We can see that we're centered and we have good fuel control. The fuel trims are good, bank to bank fuel trims are good. The engine, we've got it all the way warmed up. Um, the vacuum is good. Charging voltage appears to be well. I've got a pending code and I've got five uh, monitors that have been run. Now that tells me that they've cleared the codes and we already know that. They've been trying to fix the car. So let's take a look at the DTCs. I have a P0320, which is a distributor signal circuit. Well, really, there's no distributor on this, guys. This is the crank sensor. So what this has to do with the crank sensor. Now, they also were telling me that this has a module failure code. Now, I don't see that, but I guess it's, it's setting as well to tell you that the, the ECM is failing. Um, but I don't believe any of this. I only believe the data. So in order to get the correct data to where I can actually diagnose the car, I'm going to need to put a scope on it. Scan tools, irregardless, I mean, I get the data, but you can't totally believe all these codes. It's going to depend. So what I really want to do is I want to look at the signals, and those signals, once we interpret them, they'll tell us what's wrong with the car. Let's go ahead and look, take a look at the signals by getting the scope connected. Yeah. We've connected channel one to the CKP sensor. We've connected channel 2 to the cam sensor. We've connected channel 3 to the number 1 injector. We've connected channel 4 to the ignition wire with a, an inductive pickup so we can get the ignition waveform. We've connected channel 5 to the number 4 cylinder injector. We've connected channel 6, 7, and 8 to the coil pack so we now have ignition coil waveforms. Now I'm not sure what's breaking down on the car but we know that it cuts out and it doesn't run correctly. So what this does is it gives me a really wide span of what the control system is going to do both by inputs and outputs so we can properly diagnose this vehicle. So let's go ahead and get this thing started and see what's breaking down. We have the oscilloscope connected to this Ford Mustang. So what I first want to do is make sure that all my back probes are actually con touching the connector physically. I can do that right here. We go to the meter and all my lights are out. If I had an open lead, it'd be red. We can see that we have voltages. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the deeper cord. Now, they tell me to get this car to cut out. I'm going to have to rev it. So if I just bring it up around 2,000 RPM, they tell me it's going to start cutting out. So in order to watch what's going on, and the scope is out here, I can't control it. So I'm going to control it with my pen. If I click this once, I can start it. And if I click it a second time, I can stop it. And if I give two clicks, it'll actually put a pink mark when I feel it cut out. So what I want to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the scope. And now we're going to go and get in the driver's seat where I can apply the throttle. the data saved from this Ford Mustang, let's go ahead and analyze it. Now, I felt the engine flutter. It didn't cut out, but it just sort of fluttered at about 2300 RPM. And it was right when I shut the scope off. So we want to get the zoom window, and we want to come over here. Now, I can already see that I lost my injector. The white, inje the white trace, which is on the number four injector is missing. The green trace on the number one injector is present. Now I can also see that I have the coil state firing. 
I've got purple, orange, brown, purple, orange, brown, purple, and it continues. I did not lose those. So let's go ahead and shut those off for right now. Now this is where we had a problem, and we have a problem with here's the injectors. I'm double firing them all. And here we, we've lost the number four injector, and it doesn't come back. So what I need to do is I want to look at this crank sensor a little bit better where we can see if we have a problem. The cam sensor is also really important here. I want to make sure that the cam sensor is good and the crank sensor is good. So now we're going to go back through the data. This is where we started the fire again. So the injector's missing here. So where we want to see is the crank. It happened before that happened if we had a problem. Now I don't see any problem with the crank. It looks really clean and really good. The only thing I can see is this hump that's right here. So if I take the zoom window and we blow this up, and I want to bring the cursor down and we want that at one and a half so if I put it at the bias voltage of one and a half I can see where I can actually get a problem to where I could re-trigger do you see how if that caught this and this as I rev it and the computer caught two edges or a bump on top it's going to reset because it doesn't know. It can't keep count. It's never supposed to have those additional counts. So I've been using a scope since the 80s, and in the 80s I didn't understand this. If I saw something like this, I thought it was the problem, but I didn't know how to prove it. What I want to show you guys is a really cool trick, and that's to use a capacitive decade box to build a filter and to get rid of this bump. If I get rid of the bump and the problem goes away, the bump is causing it. If I get rid of the bump and it still does it, then that bump is not what's causing my problem. So it's a really cool trick to clean up waveforms for scope analysis. If you think you see something, I'm going to use a capacitive decade box and we're going to put it into this, this trace here or the output of the crank sensor and then I'm going to switch switches in until I just take the bump out. Then we raise the throttle. If we don't have a failure, the bump is what's causing the problem. And then the bump is being caused by either the sensor or the trigger wheel. So let's go ahead and get a capacitive decade box set up on this car. Okay, I've connected the positive of the decade box to the output from the crank sensor. I've connected the negative from the capacitive decade box directly to the battery. If we were ever going to permanently do a test, like we're going to leave a capacitor in here, always use a reference ground that goes to the computer. For right now, this will work for my testing purposes. Now is what we're going to do is we're going to turn on these switches and add capacitance while we're watching the scope. And when we get rid of the bump, then we'll do the test by raising the throttle. So let's go ahead and get the scope set up. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to come over to this screen. We want to come to a full screen, so we just have one screen. I want to go ahead and I want to set a trigger up. We want it on four. Let's get a little bit more time here. So I can see this bump right here. So let's go ahead and change the voltage so we can see that bump better. Um, we're going to also change the setting of the scope so I move it over more. Now we're going to go ahead and go a little faster. What I want to do is I want to see that in a better place so we're just going to move the trigger again and now we have this to where we're and we're going to move this trigger up to get a little bit more stable. I can see the bump. Now is what I want to do is I want to put capacity in. Do you see how I drop that? I'm flipping the capacitance. 
and I took the bump out. So I don't want the bump to go up and I don't want so much capacitance that I change the waveform. So if we come back over here and we go ahead and we get a quick capture here and we go to zoom, we can come in and we can look at this and we can see that my pattern down here is all even. When I get too much capacitance, this peak here will be pulled up. So I think that's about enough to solve my problem. I don't want too much. So I'm going to flip in one more and we're going to just take another real quick look at this. So this is a pretty good round waveform. And do you see how we're more rounding than when we came up? I'm going to unplug the negative side from this and I'm going to show you what we did. I'm going to plug it back in. So this is the capacitance and you can see how it changed the signal. So we don't want to change the signal very much, but I want to take the bump out. Now if I want to look at before where the bump is, I think that bump is too big here and I think the computer is counting that edge. So now what I've done is we've done a capacitor coupling to this to where we're building a filter and we're taking that bump out. Do you see how it's round? So now is what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the scope and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get in the car and I'm going to bring the RPM up to around 23, 25 where it was cutting out. We're going to see if it cuts out or not. So let's go ahead and do that. throttle around from 20 to 25 I really didn't feel anything we stopped the scope so what we want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to turn all my channels back on now we want to go to zoom reset and a zoom window now since the coils weren't creating a problem last time for me let's go ahead and shut those off so what we have here is we have the injectors and we could see where we were losing the injector but now we're not losing the injector. The injector is staying present where before repeatedly if we raised the RPM we would lose injectors. So what this proves is by taking the bump out where the computer can't count it at a, at a threshold point, the computer doesn't get confused and we're not losing injectors and the engine's running okay. So now is what we need to do is take a closer look at the trigger wheel and the sensor to try to understand why this is happening. Okay, so here's the trigger wheel and I can see that this is my missing tooth. Do you see how I have bridges right here for each teeth as a bridge? And right here I don't have anything. Well, do you see how I still have that bump in front? Well, the bump right here, that bump is what we're picking up. And that magnetic field is being picked up by that bump and it's creating that uh, waveform that crosses the threshold of the program. So the program has extra crossings and it can't account for them and it gets confused and it then sets module errors and it sets the crank sensor error or the distributor signal error. This right here is my sensor and I can see where the sensor is sitting and where that sensor is sitting is way far out. It's towards the outside of that ring where those bumps are. So either the sensor needs to go in and it's hard mounted as you can see right up here and then the wheel needs to come out. One of them is going to have to move. So either the wheel's going to have to come out or the sensor is going to have to go back in in order to fix this problem. Um, so that's really what's going on there. Okay guys, we're back down at the shop. They went ahead and they removed the sensor off of the engine 
and they ground the front cover down about 200 thousandths. That moved the sensor towards the engine and it centered it over the uh, CKP trigger wheel. So now is what we want to do is get some waveforms. Channel 1 is on the crank sensor, channel 2 is on the cam sensor and all the other traces. I have all six injectors. I'm not worried about coils because last time we were down here the coils didn't have a problem. The injectors were the things cutting in and out. So let's go ahead and get the data. I want to go to deep record. We want to go ahead and get some data. So we want to zoom. We're there. We want to come down and we want to look. And here we can see that there is no uprising bump. There's just a smooth transition. This is the way it should look. Because the sensor wasn't centered over the target wheel, the trigger wheel, and it has that front bump, it was that front bump was being picked up by the magnetic intensity and that was making a voltage. So now they fixed this. This is going to work great. So we want to go ahead and we want to go ahead and start this. And I'm going to go ahead and rev it up and we're going to get to about 2500 or so, 2200 where it was failing before and then we'll take a look at it. Okay guys, I revved it up. I went through the range before. You could feel it flutter and have problems. Every time I did that I had problems. Now let's go ahead and take a look. I did not feel any problem with that rev. Um, it was fine. So we want to go ahead and take our zoom window. And here we can see all the injectors. And we can see that they're all firing. Let's go ahead and get a little bit bigger zoom so we can see it better. We can see that the injectors are all present. I'm not dropping any of the injectors. The car runs great and the car is no longer setting any codes. Um, basically this vehicle is repaired. This is a really hard diagnostics if you're not using a scope. You really need to start to use scopes to find problems. If you follow a logical process to where it's event driven, I'm going to run a test and that test is going to drive my next test and you have quality equipment, you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.